thank you very well, much viewers for tuning into this lesson. We want to move forward today to look at uh, uh, what we refer to as integrals, both the definite and uh, the indefinite integrals. Now, uh, integrals is not a new case. We have been, what we have been doing actually is getting the integrals. But we want now to look at uh, what do we refer to as a, a, a definite integral and an indefinite integral. Now, sometimes you may be told to get uh, the actual values of a function when you know the values of x within given limit. For example, if this is y equals to 2x squared and you are told to get uh, the summation, remember that we talked about the sigma notation where you can say this is 5x equals to 2. So you realize that this case here, if someone tells you to get this particular case here, where uh, you are going to substitute this function, the summation of points, when x is 2 to when x is 5. So it means that in this case, the limits are actually declared for you. But sometimes these limits are not there. So if limits are not there, it means that uh, we are dealing with what we call indefinite integrals because we don't know within which limits you do be able to deal with this particular function. So uh, usually, in this case that we have here, we are saying that uh, usually we use the, this symbol, an elongated S, to represent a process of integration or an instruction to integrate. So whenever you see this kind of symbol in mathematics, it's telling you to integrate. You don't have to be told to integrate. You can just be told to evaluate or to work out. So in that case, you know that you are told to integrate once you see that x. Now, usually, when you're writing uh, the process of integrating x, it's written this way. The integral of x power n dx with respect to dx. dx here tells you that you should be able to integrate with respect to x, which is here. Now, you realize that once you do this, this is the elongated x, which means integrate. Once you do this, you should be able to get this, meaning that what we have been doing previously is actually integrating. We have been doing what we call indefinite integrals. We are dealing with uh, def uh, an integral without actually declared limits. So once you do that, you know that the, the value of y in this case after uh, you do, the integral will be x power n plus 1 over x plus 1 plus c, the arbitrary constant. And we have said that every time the value of n must not be negative 1 because therefore it will give us a problem. Now if you are dealing with a polynomial, we have said a polynomial is a function with different many terms. You differentiate each term at a time. And, and also we know that uh, the only thing that differentiates uh, from us definite and indefinite is that when you have this particular symbol here with no limits on it, then you know that that's a, a, an indefinite integral. And the only thing you can get from indefinite integral is to be able to get a function, nothing more. But when you have limits, for example, the upper limit here, someone tells you this is 10 and this is 3, where this a 10 and 3 are values of x, then that time you have what we call a definite integral, as we are going to see later on, because actually you can now be able to get the value of this integral and between 3 to 10. So that is something that is going to be very key to us when we move to the next part of this lesson, uh, when we look at uh, definite integrals. Now, for now, I want you to just know that what we, have, what we are supposed to do here is what we have done before. So I'm just going to give you uh, probably one uh, example. Uh, here we have x squared plus 1 dx. Now we said that... Uh, this symbol tells us to integrate. This is the expression to be integrated. It tells us to integrate with respect to x. Now, what we are going to simply do here, we know that uh, integrating this one will just be what we said before. With this a polynomial, we have x squared and this one. So we say x two power one over, this is y over two plus one plus x zero plus one, because this is one. So 1, we say this is the same as 1 times x power 0 over 0 plus 1 plus c. So y here will be um, a third, because this is 1 is here, silent 1, over 3. A third x power 3 plus x, then plus c. So that is all about that one. Then part b, 
is going to be if you have this one x cubed plus 4x dx so this one here we know that uh, uh, when we differentiate this one, you get y. So y will be x 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 plus 4x. x is the same as x power 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, then plus c. So y in this case will be 1 over 4 because 3 plus 1 is 4. Then there's a silent one here, x power 4 plus, this is 4. 1 plus 1 is 2, so it's going to be 4 divided by 2 is 2, x power 2, then plus c. You realize that that's what we get from an indefinite integrals. But now if you are told that you need to get the function, you will need a coordinate where the curve passes through so that you can be able to do what you have done before to look for the value of c. So let's go to definite integrals. So uh, a definite integral, like we have said before, is uh, supposed to be having limits, two limits, usually the upper limit and the lower limit, like I explained earlier. Now, an integral uh, with the limit is called a definite integral. In definite integral, like in this case, when you have something written like this, this one is a definite integral because it has the upper limit and the lower limit. If I happen to remove these limits here, then what we are remaining with here is simply an indefinite integral. So uh, you realize that if we have this 5 to 1, this is an integral in an instruction to integrate with the limits 5 to 1, meaning the end result here we are going to have a value here. So if we integrate this one here, we are the integral must be put in a bracket. Remember that this one is an, an instruction to integrate, but after integrating which is going to be um, uh, 2 plus 1 because this is 2. So if I have this power 2 here, what I'm going to have here is, uh, I'm going to add 1 here, then everything divided by the new power, which is 2 plus 1, then plus c, which is the, uh, the arbitrary constant. So this is 2 plus 1 is 3, and uh, this one is 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. That will give me x power 3, x power 3 plus c. So x power 3 plus c within limits 5. One. You realize that the integral now we put the upper limit on the other corner and the other one on the lower corner. Then what we need to do here is to substitute 5 here minus when this one is the lower limit because it is between 1 and 5. So we are going to say that the answer will now be x cubed which is 5 cubed plus c minus. The other one will be when x is 1. So x 1 cubed plus c. So this will be, uh, you realize we are going to have 5 cubed, uh, which is 125, 125 plus c minus 1 cubed is 1 minus c. You realize that c minus c will cancel out, and that's why when we are integrating definite integrals, we don't even need to include that c, because we know at the end of the day, it will cancel out. So this one will give us, finally, 125 minus 1 is 124. This is the uh, definite integral of this one here. x squared, 3x squared with the limits x equal to 1 to x equals 5. So this is how we handle a uh, definite integral. Realize that what we are getting here is a value, but with indefinite integral, what we are getting was a function. So that's what we are going to really meet every time. So when you are given uh, an indefinite, a definite integral, like in this case, uh, first, integrate to get the integral, then get the difference of the integral for the upper value, when you substitute the upper value, which is in this case is 5, minus uh, the lower value when x is 1, then you subtract the 2, then you get that answer there. It's probably just three steps, integrating, substituting, and subtracting the two integrals, and then probably manipulating to get your final answer. So let's see a few examples of uh, definite integrals for x power 4 minus 5 dx. So there's not going to be much to be said here because we have seen what to do here. If you have to do this, the second step that you need to deal with here is to integrate. When you integrate this one, it will be going to be 
x power 4, we add 1 here, over 4 plus 1, minus 5, x power 0 plus 1, over 0 plus 1, then plus c. Once you do that, it should be in bracket with the limits 1, 0. So this will be uh, 1 over 4, x power 5, minus 5, x plus c but we said that uh, when this c we can just ignore c in our subsequent processes stages which we're going to be so we are going to substitute one and then subtract when this the same same function we substitute one then we subtract when x is zero here so it will be one over four into one power five minus five into one I said that I don't need to include C because at the end of the day C will subtract or will the difference of the C will be zero. That will be one over four into zero power five minus five into zero. So this one here will be uh, one power five is one times a quarter is just a quarter minus five minus we know that this will be 0 minus 0. So basically we are going to have negative, negative, if you have a negative 4 and 3 quarters. Let's look, let's go to the second example. Uh, the second example is evaluate number two. Number two is evaluate three x squared minus four x plus five with respect to x. The limits are three and two. So if this is the definite integral we're supposed to deal with. What we said here is that just uh, let's integrate, sorry. Let's integrate this one. Integrating this one will mean that we have 3 x squared plus 1 over 2 plus 1 minus 4. x is the same as x plus 1, then plus 1. x power 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 5, and I said 5 is a constant, so the same as power 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1, then plus c. So this one, we said, must be in bracket, and the limit is 3, 2. So here, 3 over 3 is just 1, so it will be x power 3 minus 4 over 2 is 2 x squared plus 5x because this is 1, 5 divided by 1 is 5, then we have, we have 0 plus 1, so x power 1 is x, then plus c. But like I said, c in this case, we'll have to finally uh, uh, self-eliminate, so we are just going to probably drop it along the way when we substitute here. We'll say this is now, the upper value is x, which is 3, so 3 power 3 minus... 3 power 3 minus 2 into 3 power 2 plus 5 into a 3. I said that I just want to ignore C because finally it will self eliminate. Then here it will be 2 power 3 minus 2 into 2 power 2 plus 5 into 2. So 3 cubed is 27 minus 3 squared, that's 18, plus 15. Minus, this is 8, 2 cubed is 8, minus 2 uh, squared is 4 times 2 is 8, plus 10. So we are going to have, uh, let me have here, 27 minus 18 plus 15. 
I get 24 minus 10. 8 minus 8 is 0, so minus 10. So I'll get here 14. 14, therefore, is the answer I get from there. Uh, let me go for the last example in this case, which is uh, 3. Question 3 is uh, the integral of 2, negative 1. And that one is, that is negative x cubed plus 5x plus 2 with respect to x. Uh, minus 2, sorry, this is minus 2. Okay, so let us see what we have here. The first thing we integrate to get the integral here. And when we integrate, we will get uh, negative x over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 plus 5x will be the same as pi x plus 1 power 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. Uh, minus 2 and 2 is the same as 2 x power 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1 then plus c then that one with limit to negative 1 so here what I have is uh, when we simplify we get negative a third x negative a quarter 3 plus 1 is 4 x power 4 plus uh, 5 over 2 x squared minus 2 x. I will drop c because c, like I said before, will self-eliminate along the way. So I don't need to carry it forward. So we now substitute the upper limit, which is negative 1 over 4 into 2 power 4 plus 5 over 2 into 2 power 2 minus 2 into 2 minus minus we substitute the lower limit is negative 1 over 4 into negative 1 power 4 plus 5 over 2 into negative 1 squared minus 2 into negative 1 close that one so if we solve this one, 2 power 4 is 16. So negative 16 over 4 plus, uh, this is 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20 over 2 minus 4. Then minus, uh, well, negative 1 power 4 is positive 1. So we are just going to get negative a quarter plus uh, negative one squared is one times that is just going to be five over two minus or plus now because negative two times negative one is positive two there negative 16 negative 16 over four is negative four negative four 20 over two is plus 10, then minus 4, minus a quarter, the negative a quarter, plus 5 over 2, plus 2. So, uh, if you do this math, this is negative 8, this will be 2, minus uh, Let's have some bracket. This 5 over 2 is 2.5. So 2.5 plus 2, 4. Minus 1, minus 0 0.25. It's 4, 4 and a quarter. So 4 and a quarter minus this is negative. 2 minus answer is minus 2 and a quarter. That is the final answer of this particular definite integral. So 
If you understand this part very well, then the next part we are going to look at next day, which is applications of the integration, uh, will be easier because we are going to look at applications in terms of finding area under curve and also application in terms of kinematics. So, and especially under uh, area under curve, this is going to be very critical because this is exactly what we are going to, to do. So viewers, that's the end of our lesson of today. Please uh, support us by subscribing to our channel so that you can help us in this endeavor and also we can help you to be able to cover your syllabus while you are at home. Thank you very much and please share with others so that you can help us. Grow